podcast of Unit 1. Um, today we're going to talk about collecting data, and then when we have to do math with that data, there's some rules we have to follow. So on the top of page 13, um, before we kind of talk about the top of page 13, we're going to talk about when you collect some data. This is, you can kind of add yourself some notes. Um, today we took scales. We took scales. We used, took mass using digital scales. You pretty much read the numbers as you see them on a digital scale. You don't add anything different. When we are reading volumes or lengths with a ruler or anything that has a scale, like the picture of the graduated cylinder, you can always estimate one more place than you can read. So add yourself just a note at the top. Just say, when collecting data, Just saying, okay, when you collect data, you estimate one more decimal, then you can read. What does that mean? Okay, first you have to look at your scale. So look at this graduated cylinder. So you know that this is from 50 to 60. That means each line here represents a milliliter. So if I'm reading this, this would be 51, 52. Now remember when you read, the, you want to read, this is the bottom of the meniscus. This is called a meniscus. It's the bottom curve. That's where you read the volume. So when I'm looking at this, this is 1, 2. I want to just say that that's 52 milliliters, and I want to say it's 53 milliliters. I can estimate to the tenths. Since these read to the one milliliter places, I can estimate to the tenth. So I would estimate that. Um, I'll say about 52.8. You could have said 52.9, 52.7. That's why there's that uncertainty. It's not a, there's no guarantee everybody's going to have 100%. And so we're going to talk about that. Okay, 52.8. And again, that last digit, that's the one that we were estimating. But you can always estimate one more. So now we're going to talk about why do I do that? What's the significance in doing that? So at the top there, what happens is we start calling these are significant figures. When you do a calculation in math, they might just say round to the hundreds. Physics might say something like that, or just put an answer. They tell you to always go to the tens, always to the hundreds, because you know on a calculator you can get a lot of numbers. You now have control in chemistry to know how many numbers do you write. So that's what we call significant figures, how many numbers get to count. And what it does is it's a practice of precision to tell me how careful or how good your piece of equipment was. Like that last graduated cylinder, it was only good to one decimal place. Now if you used a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, it would be good to two decimal places. And so you would include the two decimals. So here are some rules. Now these are on your formula chart that you picked up today. If you didn't pick them up today, you can get it tomorrow. So you don't have to memorize these, but you need to know how to use them. Okay, so let's go through them. First one, zeros. If it doesn't have a zero, excuse me, not a zero, if it doesn't have a zero, it counts. What's that mean? If I have the number 123, all no zeros, I would say that this has three significant figures. If I have the number 550, or excuse me, 0.555, no zeros, all three of these would get to be significant figures. Okay, so if it's not a zero, you count it. Then we have zeros. Zeros are kind of a pain. There's, you have to know where the zeros are, okay? Leading zeros, any zero before a non-zero, never ever get to count. So if you look at this number, these are my leading zeros, they're just placeholders, so the, this would only have two significant figures. Okay, captive zeros are also called sandwiched zeros. They're between two non-zeros, they always get to count. Because if you lose these, they would definitely change the value. So this has one, two, three, four significant figures. Okay, these are the pain. You have to pay attention. So trailing zeros are zeros after a number. They only get to count right here. Highlight that, do something. If there's a decimal with a trailing zero, it gets to count. So this number, 100, no decimal. The zeros don't count, so we do only say that this number has one 
significant figure. This tells me you aren't very confident in your answer because those numbers are estimates. You're not comfortable to the ones place. So you used a beaker. Where if you said 1.00, okay, if it's ever in scientific notation, you count the coefficient for your significant figures. Or you put a decimal at it, and what that's saying is this zero counts, this zero, I am confident to my ones place in my answer, so you used a more precise piece of equipment. So these would both have three significant figures. Look at this one. These don't count. This does get to count. So these are leading. They don't get to count. But this one gets to count because it's a trailing. So you can't just say it's with the decimal. It's with the decimal and trailing zeros that they get to count. Okay, let's just look at them a little bit more. Okay, different ways of looking at it, same rules. Non-zeros, so this time they're highlighted. You would count all your non-zeros. One, two, three. Okay, one, two. But let's go back. How about these, let's use all our rules. Okay, In, they call them interior. These are sandwiched. So look at this. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five on this one. One, two, three, four, five. But go back here. This actually has four total significant figures. But look at this one. This doesn't count. One, two, three significant figures. Okay, so leading zeros don't count. So this one would only have how many? Two significant figures. None of these get a count. So this number would only have one significant figure. Okay, trailing zeros. Look at these. They're in purple to show that what trailing zero means. So one, two, three, four. This has five. One, two, three, four, this has five. Okay, count how many are in here. And don't let them say just because they, so they're saying trailing, but look at before the decimal, it's just if there's a decimal, numbers, zeros after a number with a decimal always get to count. So how many total significant figures are in here? Five. How many total in this one? One, two, three, four, five, six. All six get to count. Okay, now when you have it in scientific notation, look at, you only look at this coefficient. So this has the two, this trailing zero gets to count, these two trailing zeros get to count. You put the decimal in it, even if there's no more accounting, those are four significant figures. Okay, in your packet, you have some rules. I want you to practice those. So you have those five numbers. Just go through. All you have to do is just what we're doing. Count how many numbers are significant, and we'll look at those tomorrow. Okay, we do math with the numbers. So we have some rules. There are different rules depending on what you are doing. So this first one, you pay attention, multiplying or dividing multiplying or dividing, which we do probably 75% of the time. But guess what? You're adding and subtracting in this lab, so you can't just say this is what we're doing. You count significant figures. You look at your data. Whichever piece of data or whichever number you enter in your calculator has the fewest number of significant figures, that's how many you can have at the end. So if I'm entering this, this has one, two, three significant figures. This has three significant figures. This has two significant figures. So the calculator will tell me this. But if I look at this, this answer has three significant figures. But this problem right here, this number only had two, so therefore I'm going to have to round to 6.4. I'm going to, let's talk about rounding just for a minute. Down at the bottom you have some space. Um, okay, let's go down and add some rules for rounding and we'll come back up. It's what you've always done in math. Hopefully you know these rounding rules, but let's make sure you write them down. If it's rounded, if you the number you want to round it to is followed by a 5 or higher, you're going to round up. You round that number you want to round up. If the number is followed by a 4 or lower, it stays the same. Okay, so look at I want to round it to three significant figures. So 1, 2, that's my third significant figure. So I'm going to look at the following number. This is less than 3, excuse me, less than 5, so 3.33 would be my number. So look at here. It's three significant figures. One, two, that's my number I'm rounding to. The number after it is greater, so you round it up. You round the 5 up. Okay, look at here, 199. 
Look at the number after it. Whoops, excuse me. This is where I want to round to. So the number following it is less. You just leave it. Okay, how about here? Now it's greater. So we round up to 200, but I need that third, I need three significant figures. So what do you do? You can add that decimal. Okay, one, two, three is where I want to round. Now look at you don't round and then round again because I want it round this to five and then round it up because you're double rounding. So just look at the number right after it. And since it's a four, you would just round this to 7.34. Okay, now be really careful. I'm going to add another one because this is what I see a lot. We're still going to round to three significant figures. So I have 13,540.12. That's what the calculator told me, but I can only have three significant figures. So this is my third significant figure. So I look at after it, less than. These are going to become zeros, but I can't lose the value. 13,540 will round to 13,500. Look at no decimal, because if you had decimal, then you'd have five significant figures. I cannot just round it to 135. No. If you gave me $13,540 asking you to round it to the nearest $100 and I gave you $135 back, you would not be happy. You have to keep the value. No changing the value. So you're just, if once you um, have rounded it, you fill in the numbers with the zeros then so that you maintain the value of it. So that was what we were talking about here when we rounded. So we wanted only two significant figures in this one the number following it, we rounded it up. Okay, here's just some more examples to look at. This has four significant figures. This has five significant figures. This number only has two significant figures. So when you multiply them all together, this is what the calculator will tell you. But I have to round it to only two significant figures. Is this the answer I would box? This is my final answer. Okay, dividing, same rule. Five significant figures, this only had three. This is my number with the fewest number of significant figures. So your answer has to um, signify that. So that's why I'm going to round this now to only three significant figures. So multiplying, dividing, it's the number with the fewest significant figures is what influences. Okay, well today in the lab you're going to add or subtract. Okay, this one I think is a little easier to see it than what you have in your book because you have it in the notes. Um, it has it written out, but this is to show you, it's a little easier visually sometimes, it's decimal places, decimal places, adding or subtracting. So look at when I'm adding these numbers. This is to the thousandths, hundredths, ten thousandths. So, but you can only have your answer to the hundredths place. But look at, this only has one total significant figure. I don't care when I'm adding or subtracting. It's decimal places, decimal places. So this would be rounded then to the hundredths, to two decimal places, 5.41. This has one decimal place, three. So therefore, six, you can round it up, and you would have 5.7. So sometimes if you have a string of numbers, it might be easier to kind of think of it like this until you get in the habit of recognizing where the decimal places, the place is. Um, also, it's talking about exact numbers. If I have trials, like if I did three trials, or if you're counting, any time, and so you may have just had three trials, that's not one significant figure. That's unlimited. You won't be limited by an exact amount because you could say, I exactly have that. We could have an infinite number of significant figures. So never let an exact number limit you. Okay, so at the bottom there, grab your calculators. We're getting to where we're going to be needing them. You need them in the lab to write up your lab. Um, you just do those practice, and we'll have some talk before the lab tomorrow.